Pública. Welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Jacques Kingston Compton, and today we're talking about Bellfund, its programs, its services, its history, and with me today are the Managing Director of Bellfund, Ms. Amanda De Lima, and the Training and Business Support Officer, Mr. Neil Serie. Okay. Uh, welcome to the program. Hey, good day, welcome, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to know what Bellfund is and what is its function. Okay. Okay, pretty much Belfon was established to assist unemployed or self-employed persons either start up their own micro, micro enterprise or expand their existing small businesses. So pretty much Belfon aims to reduce unemployment by promoting un unemployment um, and also, so, I'm, I'm sorry, they promote, um, they aim to reduce unemployment by promoting self-employment and also to provide easy access to credit and training opportunities for self-employed persons. Mm -hmm. yes. And so actually, uh, as I, I mentioned, you the training and business support officer. What is your role exactly? Okay, so pretty much what happens is we offer a package at Belfon where the clients would come in with a business idea. You pitch it to the loans officer. If your idea fits our criteria, we would help to develop it from inception or from scratch. So what we would do is the loans officer will assist you in developing your loan proposal. Um, thereafter, she would perform a site visit to your place, prepare all the documentation, send your loan up for approval. Once your loan is approved, then there is a mandatory training program, small business man training program that you have to attend. And thereafter, you get disbursed, you get your funds. While you're in business, we provide a service called business support, which is like a mentorship type of service. Mm -hmm. So generally throughout the, the training um, program, um, we have um, an established training program in, in place, um, training modules that we assist our clients with. Um, and we have um, a system where the clients are visited regularly to provide the support. I, I, I would imagine you have a range of industries. Oh yes, uh, well, yes, definitely. We fund a wide range of categories of business. Anything from animal hun husbandry, farming, um, service re related businesses, tourism related, service related businesses, um, anything that is legal. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we would um, assist. Well, legal, legal can change yeah, oh. depending on what year you're in. Oh, okay. So well, <laughs> sure. okay, but the general aim is um, to assist those persons. Uh, what we realize is unemployed persons or self-employed persons usually have difficulty with getting funding when approaching other finan um, financial institutions. One of the main challenges they would experience is meeting the deposit or collateral requirement. Mm -hmm. So fortunately for them at Belfond, there is no deposit or collateral requirement. Okay, so our, for our loans, there's no we require no deposit, no collateral. Um, what we ask for to secure those loans, um, where we'll be taking mortgage bill of sale on any equipment or appliance we'll purchase on your behalf. And also we ask for guarantors. So you need three guarantors to secure the loan on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So pretty much what you would need is just a project idea. You don't necessarily need a business plan or proposal or portfolio, but if you do have that, that's fine. But once you have a sound business idea, you come in, no appointment is needed. You come into our office, you are suspect to a loans officer, and we will assist you from that point. Now, as you, there's two questions that um, yes. come up as a, as a result of what you've just said. As you have such a wide range of industries that yes. you look at, how do you provide business support exactly? Because there would, I don't know if you have professionals in, in like every single industry that comes your way? Okay, that's a very good question. So what we do, we work very closely with our sister ministries and our sister government agencies or even the non-government agencies. We also encourage our clients that they work closely with their 
um, field officers or support officers. So we try our best to provide holistic support. So we would provide um, the business support. We would assist you with your bookkeeping. We would assist you with marketing. But um, based on the industry, when it comes to the technical support, we may need assistance from other officers, other professionals. Um, it's also a situation where if you would come in with a a challenge or a situation, a problem situation, mm -hmm. and it cannot be handled at the business support level, which is my level, then you can be referred to the loans officer, to the accountant, or even the manager if needs be. Okay. So you do have that form of easy access to all officers at the Bell Fund. Mm -hmm. You walk in as an existing client, or if you, you know, you're looking for information or advice or support, we would be able to assist you. And uh, either of you can answer this question. What do you, you mentioned guarantors. What do you, yes. what do you look for in a guarantor? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So a guarantor is the person who would, gar would actually um, commit to making a payment on your loan if you cannot meet the payments. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're unable to meet your payments, the guarantor will be called upon so that the payments can be made. And there is an agreement that they, they sign in relation to that so they know exactly what they're getting into. And we tell them that upon signing, upon coming back in to, to sign additional documents, they will be informed that that is their role. And I think also a guarantor should also be one who encourages the, encourages the customer to continue and have a viable business because they, they would be the one encouraging them from the beginning. I mean, the initial thing is that they signed and they've agreed to, to help them already. So that's excellent encouragement. So that just needs to continue. Mm -hmm. And I think it would work even better when the guarantors are on board with that level of encouragement throughout. It's a form of support. Okay, that's, so they, they understand full well the, the liability that they have. That is right. Okay, so I'd just like to add um, to that um, although the guarantor's role is uh, pretty much serving as security or the backup for the client, um, we do clarify that they're not partners or they don't have a stick in the business. I mean, you're just there to support the person. Um, and also, I mean, one would realize, especially in those trying times, if somebody actually um, signs a legal binding document, you know, to back up a loan for you, I mean, that is somebody who really supports you. You understand? Yeah. That is somebody who really has your back. So um, there is no fine print. There's nothing hidden. When the guarantors come in, we do interview the guarantors. We do explain to them everything. There's the documents. They could take it. They could um, review it. Um, and after signing, again, the, the hope is that it would never get to a point where we'd have to contact the guarantors. Because remember, we do have a support system, right? You do have officers visiting you. Mm -hmm. You can visit the officer at the Belfan, and you can call. Okay? So it, we would, it is pretty much last resort, which are our best. I mean, that we would not have to contact the guarantors. But again, it is the security system that we have in place. We do have a delinquency policy in place. Um, so we, it is the hope that it never gets to that point. Um, also, what the guarantors could do, they can request account information. So they could find out the status of the loan account, or whether the installment has been paid, how much is left, or anything of like that sort. Okay. Oh, one more thing mm -hmm. I would like to add that um, if the guarantor is self-employed, because we do assist self-employed persons, they would not be able to get assistance from us up until the client has repaid their loan in full. Mm -hmm. So if you're a carpenter and then you're my guarantor, you cannot apply for a loan at the Belfond up until the client who you are um, serving as a guarantor for has paid their loan in full. Okay. Uh, yes. We're due for our first break. I want you to stay with me. Mm -hmm. You're watching Issues and Answers. We'll be back in a moment. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. The government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic Government Procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification receiving an evaluation of submissions to final contract award. 
It improves communication between vendors and government agencies, provides greater transparency, and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, vendors, suppliers, and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EJP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, books, and services. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jack Kingston Compton. We're talking Bell Fund, and I'm here with the Managing Director of Bell Fund, Ms. Amanda DeLima, and the Training and Business Support Officer, Mr. Neil Siri. Mm -hmm. uh, before we went on the break, we were talking about guarantors, obviously. Yes. Um, you mentioned very, you spoke very extensively about guarantors. There's just one more thing I want to know. Do they need any um, assets? to be a guarantor? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, no. Um, no deposit or requirement. Um, no deposit or collateral, I'm sorry. Um, but the guarantor has to be permanently employed um, in their present job, in their current job, for three years or more, or self-employed for five years or more. Okay. Yes. So my next question, which I probably should have asked from, quite, from the very beginning, okay. could you talk about the history of Bell Fund? Who, who founded it? What was, why, why was it founded? Okay. how large it was maybe in the beginning and what, where are you now? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, well, the name Bell Fund actually is um, hyphenated. It's the James um, Belgrave Microenterprise Development Fund. So Mr. James Alexander Belgrave was a philanthropist from Community of Castries. Um, he was the one considered to be a champion of the poor. Um, would assist those deprived persons in sports, um, in religious activities, um, in probably establishing their own small enterprises. So in the year 1999, 2000, then um, the government at the time um, established the Bell Fund based on that philosophy. So Bell Fund was really established to um, carry on that legacy of, of Mr. Belgrave. So it is our aim, as I indicated earlier, to reduce unemployment by promoting self-employment and also providing opportunities for persons who may not um, have that ease of access to um, funding or support. Mm -hmm. um, and earlier you also mentioned um, your, the support initiatives that you have when a um, mm -hmm. person comes in and they're starting a business. Do you have any other sort of training or, or support programs? So uh, initially, mm -hmm. um, the training, mm -hmm. the training comes when the loan is approved, mm -hmm. and it is mandatory that every customer gets that training, mm -hmm. and it goes through for as much as ten days. Mm -hmm. And um, when during that period of time, they will learn how to do their own uh, micro business accounting, so that they can now get the information to the business support officers every time they visited. So at least twice a month they will be visited and they would have to show everything they've learned. They would have to produce that um, to the business support officers to show that they're, they're working, that's what they're doing and the business is still viable. Um, this is also a method used to promote the customers out of the micro business of Bell Fund and to make them able to get loans with the banks because the ones coming to us now will not qualify for a loan in the bank. They have no experience, they have no previous um, financing to show that the business will work so the banks won't approve the loan. But if through our training and our business support, they can show and they follow through with all the information that they have to give each, each month. They can now show a six month, a one year of the record of income that they get. And that helps them get bigger loans through the banks and the credit unions. Um, our maximum is $30,000. So if they need to grow their business and they need more money, they would have to follow through with the training that they're given so that they could. It, it's, um, what I want to ask is what happens if they are sort of struggling while the business is, is, has taken off a little bit? Is there support that you offer as well? Mm -hmm. 
when you say um, struggling in the beginning or? Up through, well, okay, in the beginning so, and even maybe throughout later so on. So like, I mean, every, everyone is struggling right now, for example, because um, COVID came in and what most people have done was to try and assist by giving moratoriums, lowering the monthly payments to assist them. And um, basically, that's, that's what we, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one type um, adjustment per person so that we could see how we could help them continue and make the payments consistent. Okay. Now, yes. financial management is something that I imagine is very important, yes. um, especially with what you do. Is it, do you uh, offer training in financial management and as well, do you, how important do you think it is? Because I, I, I feel like it's something that should probably be taught from the secondary school level, yes. um, if as you know, early as that. But yes. um, what financial training do you offer and do you think it's very important? Okay, okay so um, our training, um, the whole framework has, has changed and it has grown um, in that when we started off our training um, spanned over a two day period. Um, so what you find as the years have gone by, by, we have realized that it is necessary to include more content, to include more material, um, and also to expand the training days, and not necessarily in terms of days, but in terms of the quality of the training. Um, so we do have programs that um, span over two days, over four days, and probably over 10 days. Um, we do work with some of our sister organizations where, for example, we would provide business plan training that would span over a three-week period. And definitely, uh, accounting and record keeping and financial management would be two areas that we would definitely cover. So we do have training mod modules in accounting and record keeping and financial management. Um, and we do see it as key, uh, definitely considering all of the challenges that we um, are facing right now um, to provide the clients with, with those skills. So it is definitely something that we are paying very, very close attention to. It is our role as the business support officer to try our best to nip any problems in the bud or, and, and again, or, and or identify the problem, um, try our best to assist at our level, if it's something that we cannot assist, then we would, the client would be referred to uh, a more senior officer or it could be the manager. As you mentioned, there are several techniques that we use. Um, the hope is that the problem situation does not get too severe, that it leads to uh, the closure of the business. So we really try our best to restructure loans, to um, encourage the client to either expand or diversify. We, we try our best to work with the clients at all levels. Um, there are some cases where the clients would have waited till the problem situations would have got too severe, uh, where we would not be able to assist. Also, for example, where they're probably being evicted, you know, where it's too late for us to intervene. But prior to that, we, we have been successful in really um, helping the clients and, and really supporting them when they are experiencing difficulty. So we do, um, we do take the, we do provide that, um, that level of support at, at all levels. Okay. From the business support officer, the loans officer, the accountant, up to the manager. Okay, we're actually due for our second and final break. But when we do come back, I, there are a couple of things I want to talk about. Like um, you do have a, a, a social investment program that is in conjunction with the SSDF. Okay. I want to talk about that and I also understand you have so, done some work with Our Boys Matter. So when we come back, I do want to speak, um, talk about that. Okay. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. I'm so fed up with my 13-year-old child. She's driving me crazy. I just don't know what to do. All that child need is some good licks to wake up. Alice, ignore the counseling pansies given. Government employees have free access to professional counseling services under the Employee Assistance Program known as EAP. EAP? EAP? What's that? Uh, not me that telling people my business. Listen to me, Alice. I was struggling with my child. I made an appointment to see an EAP counselor, and I was very satisfied with the service that I received. And you know what? Up to a day like today, 
my information remains confidential. Cox, how come nobody in the office knew anything about your counseling? Ah, that's because EAP counselors, they work on the strict clauses of confidentiality. I know you know what confidential means. Eh, uh -uh. EAP providing professional counseling services? How much is it? Girl, the counseling is free. Free for you, free for your child. And you know what? Your information remains confidential. Call the EAP unit at the Ministry of the Public Service. Telephone number 468-2269 for more information. EAP works. Let it work for you. Yeah. Welcome back. You're watching Issues and Answers, and we're talking Bell Fund. I'm here with the Managing Director of the, of the Bell Fund, Ms. Amanda Belima, and the Training and Support Business Officer, uh, Mr. Neil Seary. I did um, misspeak a while ago. You, you, um, you don't have a program with uh, Our Boys Matter. But what I do want to talk about is your program with uh, helping women. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you can speak S about that. So we have a, a collaboration with SSDF right now, and it's in progress where we will be assisting at least 20 women, single women, um, single parents, female parents, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, based on that, what they will be doing, what they've been doing right now is training. So the training has been taken place. Um, we have a certain, we have it like split between the north and the south of the island. So we have two sets of training going on. Mm -hmm. After which in that training or right after, they will be doing a business plan. But Bell Fund has already done initial interviews with each of the subjects, I would prefer to say. and. After that point, they come back to us and the final few who succeed at the training and the business developments and everything that they've documented, they will be in receipt of a loan and a partial grant from the SSDF on one end for the grant and a loan from the Bell Fund. So they come to you, the, the single mothers? The single, single mothers will be coming to us finally, so mm -hmm. all paperwork everything will be done through the Bell Fund. And other but it is also an initiative by SSDF. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, other than the um, being a single mother, are there other sort of eligibility requirements? Well, for now, the program that we're doing in collaboration with SSDF is for single mothers. Mm -hmm. However, we are always open to anyone from age 18 up we don't give an end date mm -hmm. for loans. Um, it just depends on your idea. And the loans are short term, mm -hmm. so we, we are open to any type of business right now. You can walk in right now until 4.30 every day to apply for your loan based on your business plan or your business idea. And can you tell us about, because I'm very curious about this, can you tell us about some of the success stories of Bell Fund? Who, who would people know? Maybe, maybe they see a business somewhere and they, and they have no idea that Bell Fund was the one that assisted them. Okay. Um, we, we do have um, Benjamin Strucken. Um, he does um, a, a landscaping business. Um, he's one client who has really grown um, when he came to, to us, he did, it was a startup business. Um, we did provide the support um, from scratch. We do have um, a number of other clients who, um, okay, if I could speak of, um, there was Springs um, Bread, Springs Bakery, that was in Canneries. I don't know if you would recall right over the bridge. The Canneries Bread. Bread, yeah, but that was um, damaged by uh, the hurricane or a storm right in Canneries, right over the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, he was a client who we assisted. Um, there are several other um, clients, but I'm not sure if I'll be privy to share that information yes. too. Mm -hmm. But um, again, um, those clients had humble beginnings. Um, they did go through the, the program. They were very receptive. And... Um, as Ms. Dilema mentioned, it is the hope of Bell Fund that once you have completed your loan or uh, probably got to maybe half 
or, or even further along the, your loan term, you would have been in a position to approach a bank or other financial institutions to expand your, your enterprise. So um, we do have a number of success stories. Um, it's probably some information that I'll probably pass on to you a bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, it is our hope to continue to um, assist our clients. So, I mean, we view all clients who are currently in business as success stories, right? Because again, when you look at their circumstances, probably at the beginning, or when you look at how their businesses have been resilient, how they've been resilient given current challenges, COVID and all. So small businesses that are still in existence currently, we consider them to be success, our success stories. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're coming very close to the, the end of the program, but what mm -hmm. I want you to briefly speak on, are there any other initiatives or programs that you want to promote before we uh, go off air? Um, well, we actively work with SSDF, uh, with SEDU, and with CARE once, um, you know, we always come up with new programs, there are new programs ongoing, um, but generally the Bell Fund program that we provide, uh, it's generally open to, to all persons. Um, we presently located um, at Sunny Acres. Uh, we open Monday to Friday between the hours of 8 o'clock to 4.30. Um, you could contact us via telephone, 451-6069, uh, 451-8858. Um, we on Facebook under the name Bell Fund. You could check us out, check us, check out our website. <coughs> it's www.bellfundstlucia.com. Um, St. Lucia, S-T-L-U-C-I-A. Um, all the, in, there's some background on Belfan. Um, you could meet our team. Um, you could also review our forms as well. They're downloadable as well. Um, so th they're pretty much is easy access, as we mentioned, to uh, Belfan and our support services. So we just like to encourage persons, don't be intimidated. It's not like a bank. Um, you don't need an appointment. You could just walk in and ask to speak to an officer. But I would just like to note, uh, it's unemployed persons we serve or self-employed persons. Okay. Oh, yes. so if, if, if I have uh, a job... I'm and sorry. I, and I'm, I sorry I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. You, you don't qualify. Yes. Okay. But <laughs> if your circumstances have changed, mm -hmm. then, you know, we would be able to assist. Okay. So it may be a situation where you would have resigned or displaced, whatever the situation mm -hmm. may be, then you would have been an unemployed person. Um, you know, in need of assistance to start up your Understood. small business. And, and I imagine your, your job might have been affected a little bit by COVID. Oh, yes, um, definitely. It was a challenge um, to visit the clients. Of course, we had a quarantine period going on. So it was a bit of a challenge for us, but fortunately we were able to remain in contact with our clients via phone calls, mm -hmm. um, via video recording, and we were able to provide that level of support. So the support never stopped during that period. Okay, but I want to thank you both for coming on to our program because Bell Fund serves an extremely important purpose and uh, service to St. Lucia. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you, the two of you for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for your service with Bell Fund. Thank, thank you. And I, mm, I, I hope you can come back another time uh, maybe to talk about any more of Bell Fund success stories in the future. Sure, yes. appreciate it. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned to other programming on the National Television Network and please catch us on our social media channels, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for watching again. We'll be back next time.